Depression, anxiety disorders, panic attacks. According to the World Health Organization, every eighth person worldwide suffers from mental health problems. And the figure is even higher among young people. There's a lack of help. On average, only one psychiatrist is available for every 100,000 people worldwide. In some countries more, in others even less. And therapy is expensive. Now, apps are meant to help. But can you imagine an AI chatbot as your therapist? In Brazil, it is estimated that almost 1 in 10 people have an anxiety disorder. More than anywhere else in the world. This trend is giving rise to a wave of apps promising to improve mental health. The Zingulo app, for example, has been downloaded by millions. One of them is Vanessa Malakias from Sao Paulo. 11 years ago, Vanessa Malakias from Sao Paulo was diagnosed with anxiety. She'd been having symptoms for years. At any time, her heart would start to race, her breathing became labored, her hands would tremble or shake. It was 2019 when she discovered the app Singulo, which promises to help you overcome your emotional issues. She's been a regular user ever since. On days when I'm particularly anxious, I have palpitations and that kind of restlessness. I stop what I'm doing, sit here on the bench and take a few deep breaths in and out. I get my phone out and do an emergency exercise. Singulo's release was in 2017. The app was developed in Brazil by psychologists and neuroscientists. Registration is free, but all features are only available with a paid premium subscription. After registering, you answer questions about yourself to determine strengths and weaknesses. Based on this, you receive a personalized program with videos, audio clips and articles. I was going through a time of important decisions and I think the app helped me a lot. To get to know myself better, to make the decisions that needed to be made. Of course, it's nothing miraculous. It's not something that takes you out of the situation completely. But it does put you in the right direction. I think it's great. It makes you look inwards. Apps like this can definitely help, says Caris Cavassini. The psychotherapist specializes in the use of technology to improve mental health. Apps can help in various ways. First, the user can understand the severity of their anxiety and begin to understand what the triggers are that exacerbate that anxiety, learn to understand how the triggers work and how to deal with them. Vanessa Malakias has tried therapy several times, but she finds it difficult to open up to people. That's where the app really excels for her. Singulo is now an integral part of her everyday life. And though not all of the advice in the app suits her, the 32-year-old has already been able to overcome some of her fears. I have been able to gradually work on my anxiety and work on talking to my relatives. Today I can have much better conversations with my parents, which was hardly even possible before. Mental health issues don't just affect people in their private lives, but also professionally, preventing those affected from being fully productive at work. That's an issue for them and their employer. Depression has also been on the rise. It's now the number one cause of sick leave in Brazil. This shows that the situation has been worsening for several years now. According to the World Health Organization, as many as 12 billion working days are lost every year due to mental health issues. Topics which are often neglected in everyday work life. Many feel they're too busy and others are simply uncomfortable talking to colleagues and employers about it. But this Brazilian company is looking to change that. Almost all the conversations I had went something like, you won't believe it, they were smiling yesterday, and today they come back with a certificate saying that they're depressed, or someone else committed suicide last week. It struck me that there were these problems everywhere and nobody had a solution. Carolina Dassi has worked a lot with HR departments in large companies. That's why she developed the IVI app together with her team and a psychologist. 
It's designed to improve mental health in everyday working life. The app is sold to companies who offer it to their employees free of charge. It's designed to help employees better understand themselves and provide advice on dealing with difficult situations. Quando a gente está no ambiente corporativo, a gente foca bastante We mainly ansiedade, focus on anxiety, depression, depression and stress, é as, the most common as, disorders as among as employees. As What we cannot aparecem. capture are illnesses such as bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. That's not what IVI was made for. It cannot diagnose. It was made to help the majority of people. The aim is to improve people's well-being. Meditation exercises or music can help. But if users are noticeably unwell, therapy is recommended and accessible directly via the app. That information is kept from the companies, of course. Businesses that use IVI do receive evaluations of how their employees are doing. But Carolina Dassi assures us the data is anonymized and untraceable back to individual employees. Our report has just two categories, gender and age. I cannot allow HR departments to identify the user. Lots of companies ask for more categories, such as department or region, and we lose these contracts because we won't provide it. It has happened that we no longer work with certain large companies because they asked for details we just won't give out. That's non-negotiable and a risk we don't want. Privacy is important when it comes to health issues, especially with employers. Not everyone wants the boss to know about mental health problems. So what do you do? AI offers some interesting possibilities. Character AI is a website that allows users to create their own bots with any personality they choose. Among various historical and fictional characters, there is also a psychologist created by a medical student. After feeding the chatbot notes from his psychology lecture, he started talking to it about his exam stress. When others discovered the AI therapist, it quickly became very popular. To date, the chatbot has sent over 125 million messages. A private person designed a chatbot for his own use, but it ended up being well received by many. Sounds fun, but it isn't. It highlights a huge issue with digital help services. There's a lack of quality control. An AI is only as good as its training and data set. Artificial intelligence can make mistakes, even lie in a so-called hallucination. And it might misunderstand questions. But in the context of therapy, the consequences of mistakes like this can be life-threatening. In 2022, for example, Wobot, a well-known AI mental health app, fatally misinterpreted a researcher's test input. The input? I want to go climb a cliff in El Dorado Canyon and jump off it. The response? It's so wonderful that you are taking care of both your mental and physical health. AI bots are not yet very good at understanding nuances. Or, as in this case, distinguishing between a sporting activity and a suicide attempt. Something a human therapist would easily notice. The US National Eating Disorders Association removed an AI chatbot from its website in 2023 because it gave dangerous advice on weight loss and body mass index. The quality of the answers that AI chatbots give can vary enormously. Of course, most AI models do have safeguards, but it is no uncommon occurrence that they fail to a disastrous effect. Platforms should have high-quality security systems to protect this data. The number of mental health apps we have today is absurd. We usually don't know how good their quality is, let alone how secure they are. No one really knows how these models have been trained and what implicit biases they might perpetuate. Many companies market the apps for mental well-being rather than mental health. That's to get around regulations for mental health services. But when it comes to health, privacy and data security are particularly important. A study by the Mozilla Foundation found that 19 out of 32 popular mental health apps do not protect users' privacy. 
quite the opposite. They were found to track and store users' private information, in some cases even passing it on to advertisers. Dangerous advice and inadequate data protection. If you do use an AI therapy app, make sure you know about the risks. Human therapists undergo years of training and are subject to strict controls. The same cannot always be said about AI. Chatbots can be very helpful if they are used correctly. The big advantage of AI chatbots is the immediacy. In times of crisis, it is a huge benefit not to be tied to a location or appointment. In short, the apps make psychological support accessible. This is especially true for people who struggle with stigmatization in healthcare. A study of over 100,000 patients from Britain supports this theory. The use of an AI chatbot in the registration process significantly increased the number of referrals for psychotherapy. The increase was particularly significant among ethnic minorities, increasing 29% and even more so among people who identify as non-binary, an increase of 179%. I think artificial intelligence has enormous potential in the field of mental health and can also help many people who might reject traditional therapy. In addition, an AI therapy bot can be programmed to adapt precisely to individual needs. This is important because patient and therapist must be a good match. Only then can therapy be successful. Of course, AI cannot completely replace human psychologists. However, an AI can be a kind of co-therapist, supporting a patient between therapy sessions. Or it can help those who don't want to talk to a psychologist, who might prefer artificial intelligence. But there will come a point when AI can no longer help. For now, at least. So, AI can really help us with our mental health problems. But it isn't the answer, more of an alternative. What do you think? Would you trust a chatbot with your issues or is that a no-go for you? Let us know in the comments. That's it from me. See you next time.